Welcome back to They Reminisce Over You. I'm Miguel. And I'm Christina. And today we're going to discuss some of our favorite hip hop beefs, but only the ones where nobody died. Yes. <laughs> so originally when we were coming up with this idea, we had a list of like 10 matchups. No, more than 10. Yeah, it was more than 10. And then we're like, okay, that's too many. So we narrowed <laughs> it down to eight. And then when we started actually putting it together, I was like, you know what? I think two would be more than enough. Yeah, let's so, bring it down to a manageable number. We're just going to do two this round and this will be an ongoing series. But we're going to start with Jay-Z and Nas. Yep. And then part two will be Lil' Kim and Fox Boogie Brown. Yes, we're going to knock two big ones out at the very beginning. So we're ready. coming out strong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do this. Okay. So if you are a certain age and you listen to hip hop, Jay-Z and Nas, if you want to talk about hip hop beefs, you have to talk about the two yep. of them because this was just a big deal. It was <laughs> for years. And also, I think what makes it a bigger deal looking back on it now is this started mid 90s, early 90s and went well into the early 2000s. So this started pre-internet. Yeah. So I think just drama and stuff. We just didn't have it. Yeah. As much as we, we have access to drama daily. Yeah. Right, right now it's like <laughs> every 45 minutes something is happening. Yeah. Like I spend one day off of Twitter and I miss, I don't know, whatever the drama was. <laughs> yeah. T today's drama has yeah. been missed. <laughs> so I think that's what also made it a really big deal, but also just who they were. And stuff. Yeah. It was mostly because of who it was mm -hmm. more than anything. And like you said, it was a different time. So if you hear something, you're not going to get a response immediately like right. you do now. Now, it might take six, seven months <laughs> before yeah. you hear somebody's response record. Exactly. So with that being said, let's start off with the general background, because there are some right. things that I learned preparing for this episode that I didn't know back then, because okay. as I was saying, we just didn't, <laughs> we have, didn't have access to the it. same kind of access to information as we do now. So this kind of starts mid 90s. Illmatic was released in 94 and it was like highly anticipated debut. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of buzz going on around Nas. And as we mentioned in the Source Awards episode, Biggie cleaned up despite the fact that Illmatic was critically acclaimed, but he was definitely definitely someone that people were watching. Yep. And then Reasonable Doubt was released in 96, which was also a critically acclaimed debut and also includes a cameo from a young Inga, aka yes. Foxy Brown, mm -hmm. who we will talk about in part two. We will. And then It Was Written by Nas was released a month after Reasonable Doubt. And then Biggie untimely death in 97. Mm -hmm. I think all of that kind of also plays into how things panned out. Yeah. And because Biggie wasn't there, you then have this void of who's, who's going to be the king of New York. Right. And the two at the top of the list were Nas and Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to be very competitive between the two right. of them. So even if the two of them weren't already beefing, you know, people were kind of pitting them against each other anyways because there's only room for one king of New York, I guess, right? <laughs> there can only be one king. Yeah. Which is what Nas said on the message. Oh, right. Yep. There can only be one king. Mm -hmm. so. Was that on the, uh, it was written? Yeah. Right? So it was the message. Yeah. Okay. The first, first song. Yeah. One life, one love, and there can only be one king. Yeah. So allegedly how it started, which I didn't know about this, but allegedly Nas was supposed to appear on Reasonable Doubt. Right. But he never showed up to record his verse. And then um, the producer, Ski Beats, ended up sampling Nas's Dead President's line. Yeah. From the world is yours for Jay-Z's Dead Presidents 2. That's the story that I always thought it was. He was supposed to come in, re-record that I'm out for presidents to represent me. He never showed up. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, it wasn't fuck Nas, but it's like, <laughs> that dude's a snake. I, don't, I can't mess with him. That's the way I always took it. I didn't know they had beef until, which we'll get to, take over. Yeah. I was just like, huh? Where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> right. But apparently it started maybe from this. Because which was 96. There, there is a secondary timeline mm -hmm. happening as well. Yes. With Nas's baby mama, Carmen, mm -hmm. who claims that she is the cause for the beef and not the song not take over, not him showing up to the, the recording session. It's her because allegedly 
She's the Helen of Troy of hip hop. Helen of Troy Those of hip hop. Those are her words. Yeah, we didn't make this up. These are her <laughs> words. And she says that she was dating Nas and cheating with Jay Z. Mm-hmm. Also, his baby mother. Right. <laughs> they, baby the mom. mother of his child. Seems plausible, but the only problem I have with it is why would it take that long? for it to bubble over if the cause is her back in 1996 Mm -hmm. why are we just waiting until 2001 for it to bubble over that's why i don't think she's the cause of it Mm -hmm. i think she thinks she's the cause of it unless Nas didn't find out till later but according to her he knew okay there's also a third storyline okay give us the third one memphis bleak Yes. Jay-Z's protege. Mm-hmm. I found a couple interviews, most notably the one he did on Drink Champs, Noriega's right. podcast, where he said he started it. Yes. Because he was hot at the time and he thought he was just on fire. And the funny thing is now he says... He kind of blames it on his one friend. He said the name of a guy. Yeah, I don't remember the guy's who, name. Who like hyped him up into believing that this line that Nas said <laughs> was, was about, about him. him. So basically, you know what? I think it's possible. Actually, it could be about him because okay, so Memphis Bleak in his song "What You Think of That," he said, "My whole team rock rocks. We don't speak to cats. I'm a ball till I fall. What do you think of that?" Right. Then Nas says in Nostradamus, "You want a ball till you fall," which is basically quoting his line i can help you with that you want beef i could let a slug melt in your hat see that one was about memphis bleak but memphis bleak is talking about another song oh that's what he was responding to was a different one that was on a dj clue mixtape apparently and he says now that it wasn't now that he thinks about it but the guy (laughs) hyped him up so much (laughs) calling him on vacation like hey Nas is getting at you he just went and was like all right fuck Nas, and that's when he did his right and then Nas came back Okay. So the hilarious thing on the Drink Champs episode is he's telling this story and the Noriega looks at him and he's like, so in your mind, (laughs) you thought you could take on Nas? And the whole room just explodes. Everybody laughs. And even (laughs) Memphis Week, he understands. He starts laughing too. He was just like, all right, okay, okay, I get it. I get why y'all are laughing. But he was like, I was so hyped up. I thought I could do it. And Noriega is like, look, if Jay-Z or Nas come at me, I would let that go. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But Memphis Bleak was hyped up by his friend. He was. He was hot. He thought he was ready to take him on. And so he did. (laughs) Yeah, he just jumped out the window and and we're off and running. Oh, and the other hilarious thing was he's like, his role in the beef was the same as his role in state property. (laughs) I just shoot at shit. (laughs) (laughs) So basically he started it, which I didn't know. So they went back and forth for a little bit. And then Nas drops his stillmatic freestyle. And that's when Jay-Z was like, all right, little homie, I'll take over for you. (laughs) And and there was also the, uh, the song he has myth bleak is, which apparently pissed Nas off as well. Nas is like, I don't see any connection there, but you know how sensitive and petty these rappers are <laughs> because the song sounds nothing like right. Nas is like the content says nothing similar yeah. to the song just the title is is in the title right it, with an ellipsis right <laughs> like that's all <laughs> that's the only similarities between the two honestly I hated the Nostradamus album so I didn't even know like this song and that line even if I knew that him and Bleak were beefing I wouldn't have yeah. noticed anyways <laughs> I really did not like that album so with Memphis Bleak telling his story Carmen telling hers and then the original origin story we have of Nas not showing up to the session I think it's some sort of combination of the three yeah I think just shit was brewing yeah like I don't think she was the catalyst for it because it wouldn't have taken that long for it to spill over and just general competitive bravado yeah now Biggie's dead someone's got to take over so it's just kind of like all these things had to happen I guess right and something that I never really paid attention to before is on is that your bitch Mm -hmm. it's like who could jay-z possibly be talking about because he's talking about very specific references on that song we now know that he was talking about her right but at the time it's like you're talking a lot of shit for for some reason also like i keep saying we just 
didn't have the same kind of access to the information. Yeah. Like, I didn't know who the hell Nas's baby mama was. Right. And Jay-Z's <laughs> always talking slick to somebody because that's what he does. And even um, now, like, when I first heard of the beef, it was Takeover. Right. I never heard this Stillmatic freestyle until recently, which came before Takeover. Yeah, because he just basically went at everybody on Rockefeller yeah. on the song. Poor Cisco caught a stray for no reason. Uh, Cisco caught a stray and Cormega caught one too. Oh, I missed the Cormega. <laughs> yeah, it was just thrown in in the middle of him saying a whole bunch of other stuff about them. Yeah. Some really inflammatory stuff. <laughs> and he was just like, you corny like Cormega. And uh, then just it just thrown in okay. there. A little sprinkle. <laughs> a little sprinkle. So he called um <laughs> Jay-Z the rapping version of Cisco, <laughs> which was like a gay joke to the, the whole which, song. Yeah. The song was called well now it's called the Stillmatic Freestyle, but H to the Izzo was out, so yeah. he called him H to the Homo or something. Like it's spelled out it's just stupid. <laughs> Very uh, you know. Very over the top and aggressive for yeah. nineteen or actually two thousand one. Right. There was a lot of shots taken. Yeah. So this is when Jay Z was like, All right, let's do this officially. Which is hilarious because you can see the petty in him. Mm-hmm. Because he's already got some issues going on with him and Mob Deep as well because of what he said on, uh, I forget which song it was, but he said that New York was soft since Snoop came through and yep. crushed the building. And they took offense to that. So they had been throwing shots at him in songs and interviews. And then this Nas thing came out of nowhere. Again, I was out of the country mm -hmm. when all of this is happening. So I didn't know any of this until a friend of mine told me about Takeover. Right. So we went out and bought the CD in St. Thomas because, again, <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> went to his record shop in St. Thomas, bought Takeover, listened to it. was like, where did this shit come from? Right. Why is he just mad at everybody yeah i was listening to all these records but i didn't make any connections to anything yeah. right and so when the takeover came out it was like what and right. because i i hadn't heard the stillmatic freestyle either so yeah. so he's performing at summer jam and a lot was happening in this performance already <laughs> yes like he brought michael jackson out well he did that at the end yes but it's the same performance yeah and it's like wait a minute so you debuted <laughs> takeover and brought michael jackson yep out. Same day. Which also produced one of the greatest memes of Jay-Z just standing there looking sour and everyone else is like, <laughs> whoa. And then there's a picture with Michael Jackson and the rest of them. And he's just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll save the Michael Jackson story for another time. Or you could just look up yeah. Hot 97's 2001 Summer Jam. Yes. So this is the first time anybody has heard a takeover. Yep. And so I couldn't find any video of this, but I was hoping... You know, random people on YouTube. I was hoping somebody did. The closest was somebody uploaded the audio. Yeah, the audio has been but, out for, forever, yeah. but the, okay. there's no video. Hot 97 has video, but they've never released it. Hmm. But we've seen just a still picture. Yeah. So he starts with Mob Deep, and this is where also the lexicon was changed. Getting put on the Summer Jam screen. Put on the Summer Jam screen became a thing that we say now. Yes. Because he literally put Prodigy up on the Summer Jam <laughs> screen. So he uh, put a picture up of Prodigy when he was a kid. His grandmother owned a dance studio, so he was wearing his dance recital Michael yeah, Jackson outfit. Michael Jackson outfit. So he puts him up on the screen, calls him a ballerina. The rumor is Ashanti gave him the pictures of Prodigy. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> the dance school was owned by his grandmother and right. she was like renowned. The school was very popular. She went to the dance school, so she had all the pictures. So she allegedly gave Jay-Z the pictures. Not I believe it. Not sure why, if she had her own beefs or he just <laughs> asked and she was like, all right, I got some. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was an open call like, hey, who Maybe. got some, some dirt on this guy? <laughs> so it's just audio and you can hear the audience is just quiet because yeah. they just want to eat up every word because nobody's heard this. Right. And I think I'm sure a lot of people had no idea that this was even happening. Right. Because like you said, yeah. we weren't getting this kind of information. Yeah. So he's just going in on Mob Deep and... So Mob Deep, they're like little dudes, right? Yeah. And I just he think that when you call someone a little fuck, that's <laughs> extremely disrespectful. It is. <laughs> and the best part of all that is apparently they're playing a version of the song that wasn't even mixed and mastered yet. So it's a very raw, bare bones version of mm -hmm. it. And he starts rapping and then they just end the beat and he's doing it a cappella. Uh -huh. He's stopping and starting it over so you can hear what he's saying about Prodigy. And the crowd is just, ooh. Yeah. And then one bar at the end. 
Ask Nas. He don't want it with Hov. Yeah. And then everyone's like. Ah. Which was brilliant because he just baited him. Yes. He's like, I'm just going to leave this here just to see what his response is. Mm-hmm. So not only was the, the Summer Jam screen now a thing that people say. Also, we don't believe you. You need more yeah. people. <laughs> that was a master class in baiting people. Yeah. So just looking at the timeline of all this and how Jay-Z responded to Nas, he's a master troll. I think. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. He doesn't come across as one, mm-hmm. but he's definitely a troll. Yeah. Now everyone's like, what is going on? Yep. Right? And then the blueprint gets released and the takeover is on the album. Yeah. We get to hear the full version. Also produced by a young producer named Kanye West. Yes. Some guy <laughs> that you may have heard of. Back when people were probably calling him Kane. Kane. <laughs> Still. <laughs> so Takeover was included on Blueprint. It's now mixed and finished. And there's an extra long verse yeah. for Nas. And the addition of the lame <laughs> punctuating all of the insults just makes it even more disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. So what I found on this song, on top of just what he's saying, his tone makes it so much more disrespectful. Right. Because he's talking to him like he's this pesky little brother. It's like a verbal pat on the head. Smarten up, Nas. <laughs> yes, which is another great line. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but there used to be a website called Smarten Up Nas. No. It was a website slash message board. <laughs> oh, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, smartenupnas.com. Oh, man. There's the Smarten Up Nas. There's the one hot album every 10-year average. Oh, he's like, the first one was the Elmatic. Second one. Eh, like just the tone is yeah. so <laughs> and the thing is that's what people were saying about Nas because yeah. he came out hot and then it was written kind of slipped a little bit yeah. and then mm-hmm. I am and Nostradamus people were like what yeah. the hell happened here by the time we got to Nostradamus it was like uh... yeah so it was perfect for him to do this at this time right. because Nas was fading at this point and then he also had the stillmatic freestyle to kind of work with too, because he's like, "You made it a hot line. I made it a hot song." Yeah. Was it the takeover where he said he knows who he paid, or was that? Yeah. Okay. Because that's what Nas was talking right. about. I'm getting paid every time you use it. Right. Like, yeah, but you're not getting paid. <laughs> Search is getting paid. Your publishing <laughs> is getting paid, which you don't own. Because <laughs> like, you might get a couple pennies off of it. Yeah. But he's getting paid. So I don't know if he was holding back, hoping to bait Nas, or if he just was like, I won't take it that far. But on TakeOver, he only hinted at the Carmen stuff. He said, you know who, did you know what, you know who, let's keep that between me and you. So baiting him. You think he was baiting him? Yes. The same way that he did it at Summer Jam was like, I'm only going to give you this much. Just to rile you up and see what happens. Just to see what he says. (laughs) And then I'm going to hit you with the full song. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little more in the full song to see if you jump out and take the bait again. So Nas comes back with ether yep. on Stillmatic. So this also changed our lexicon because ether now became a verb. Yes. So, I mean, that's just something that people say now, yep. right? You got ethered. <laughs> so Nas said in an interview with New York Times that he chose the name ether because he wanted to burn Hove's spirit. <laughs> <laughs> And makes your soul burn slow. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, I'm always tickled when Jay-Z gets referred to of Hawaiian Sophie fame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tupac said it first. He did. In which song was it? Bomb first. All right. And he was like. Well, actually, Tupac didn't say it. Oh. It was the guy on the intro to Bomb first. Oh, right. Yes. But it was Tupac's song. But yeah. he had like a little um intro. Like a little narrator. Yeah. Talking about mob sleep. Yeah. Notorious P.I. IG, big little whatever. And Jay-Z of Hawaiian Sophie fame. Hey, it always makes me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> I did think he he had some good lines, but I did think he kind of leaned on sort of, it's kind of lazy childish, just call him gay and ugly right. and stuff. Right? He's like, eh. I think depending on what you think 
is an insult is how you view who won. So to me, I'm like, meh, you call me gay, you call him ugly, like whatever. To me, it's just like childish insults. When he says things like name a rapper I ain't influenced or gave you a style to rhyme under because people were saying how he switched up his flow. Yeah. KRS already made an album called Blueprint. Which Eminem. I've always had a problem with because oh. KRS-One's album is not called The Blueprint. Oh, it isn't? No. I just assumed it was. I don't listen to KRS-One, so. Uh, what's the actual title? I'm going to look it up right now, okay. but it's not blueprint. Blueprint is in it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Nas is like myth bleak mm-hmm. is it's one of those situations. Okay. The name of the Boogie Down Productions album is Ghetto Music, the blueprint of hip hop. Mm. That's not the same. I see. Yeah. Again, it's like the Nas is like myth bleak. Is. Right. Like, come on, you, you being petty now. <laughs> well, it is a battle, <laughs> I guess. But another good line was Eminem murdered you on your own shit because that's what everybody was saying. Yeah. That his verse on Renegade was just way better. Yeah. And this being on Jay-Z's album. So I liked it when he stuck to that kind of stuff. Right. Or even just, I don't know why he said this, but it just sounded funny. Like you 36 in a <laughs> karate, karate class. class. I don't and call him a Thai Thai boho. Boho. Like that's funny. But yeah. This is sort of like low hanging fruit of like, oh, you gay, you got right. big lips. I could do without those. But I guess if you're insulted by that, it's going right. to jab at you. I also think it's funny that he mentioned Foxy when him and Foxy were in the firm together. I mean, right. At this point, I don't think. Uh, not yet. Uh, it was creeping up. Actually, no, it had been done already. Yeah. Because that was before. That was like 90s. Yeah. 96, 97, yeah. something like that. And this is like 2001. So it's like, <laughs> why are you bringing up Foxy? <laughs> I'm guessing less they fell out too. And he's just talking about how Jay-Z hates women and stuff, right? But like you throwing in your old friends yeah. name too. So I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he has some good jabs yeah like for me first of all the biggest issue i've always had with Nas is he cannot pick a good beat to save his life <laughs> like he's gotten better at it on the last few albums mm-hmm. but for the most part that's been his worst attribute is beat selection if we could let rick ross choose all the beats for Nas, Nas <laughs> would have been the greatest rapper of all time easily because Rick Ross has a great ear for beats, okay. but Nas has horrible production choices. Mm-hmm. Like there's a song on one of the albums where it's literally like somebody shaking some chains, nothing else. Um, which album was that? The one of the newer ones, right? No, it's on the, the nigger album. Oh, I never listened to that album. It's a song, but I know what song you're talking about. J Electronica, and it's literally just chain shaking. That's the kind of stuff Nas does. Yeah. So that's one reason I didn't really like either is because I don't like the beat. So I didn't like the beat either. But I think there was the ones who were like, real hip hop, I listen to lyrics, right? right? Like a hot beat it's supposed to be secondary. He's like, no, I mean, you could do, why not both? Yeah. And <laughs> what else I like about it is some of the funny lines, like you said, 36 in a karate class <laughs> and mustache with whiskers like yeah. a rat. The funny stuff like that. Yeah. And also, what else I liked about it was just the fuck Jay-Z from <laughs> Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, that was clever. I see what you're doing here. You're bringing him into it, too. But on a whole, I think TakeOver is better. I think Jay-Z's was just more consistent. Yeah. TakeOver was a sniper on the roof. TakeOver was Kennedy being assassinated. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Ether is a (laughs) drive-by. Just spraying all over the place. Like, you probably kill him, but... People are dying, (laughs) but it's all over the place. Whereas TakeOver was more direct and surgical. Yeah. That's the difference between the two for me. Yeah. I'm trying to remember how I felt at the time because in the beginning, I was a bigger Nas fan. It took me a little while to warm up to Jay-Z. I don't know why, no real reason in particular, but I loved Illmatic and I liked it was written. And when Reasonable Doubt came out and everyone's like, ah, classic, classic. It's not that I didn't like it. I just wasn't a huge fan like everyone else. It took me a while. I can't remember which album where I finally was like, all right. 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 Like I listened to it, but it wasn't like, oh, I love Jay-Z. It was like, Nas, Nas, yeah. Nas, Nas. But then Nostradamus had came out. That was when I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I had given up on Nas. It was just like, I could do without this. So I think I may have just preferred Nas at the time just because I was a bigger fan. But listening to it now, basically what you said, Jay-Z's, it was more like bam, bam, bam. Whereas Nas, he had some good lines and then he had some throwaway lines. Yeah. You know, I could ignore the throwaways, but then if they're throwaways, then just throw them away. <laughs> like yeah. I would rather a minute of shot, 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 shots, shorter and more succinct. I don't even mind that the beat was meh because the whole point is 
the lyricism, right? Right, but at the but same the time, <laughs> you need something to carry it as well. Because right. I can't think of another diss song where the beat was as bad as on Ether. But that's just me. Some people love Ether, at least the beat. I'm not one of those people. Because I think at the time in New York, because a lot of the articles I was reading, you know, Hot 97, of course, is all up on this. And they were doing polls right. and stuff. It was close, but Nas was always the winner. Yeah. And it's because Nas had gotten so far away from this mm -hmm. with his previous work. Right. Because Maybe people were just happy to have this Nas yeah, back. Yeah. Because if he doesn't make either, Nas is done. Like his albums are fading at this mm -hmm. point. He's doing You, you Owe Me. me. <laughs> it's like this is the kind of stuff he's doing now yeah he needed ether to save his career and basically it did because i'm sure he would have just faded into obscurity or he would have come back two three years later and no one really cared this was his mama said knock you out moment i'm back like i'm, I'm back. still here yeah um back to the drink champs episode with memphis bleak no he asked him you know how they all felt when Nas dropped ether and he's like it's not about it being good <laughs> he's like it was just we gonna have to get our guns and kill him <laughs> he was just saying it was just like the attack blah 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 but the funny thing was uh when he said <laughs> funk master flex was a human amp <laughs> he was talking about how they were playing it all the time he's right. like you know funk master flex with his oh my god right dropping bombs and shit so, of course, you know, Hot 97 was all over this, playing it back to back and just kind of fanning the flames. And the thing that really mm -hmm. tipped the scales in Nas's favor is when Super Ugly came out. It was just Jay-Z out of character. Like, he went way overboard <laughs> yeah. in a way that he usually doesn't. Like, he's usually calculated, like we're talking about, and more surgical with it, whereas now Super Ugly is the drive-by. It's like, oh, you sprayed at me. Now I'm spraying back the whole block up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to get it. And that's when Carmen gets pulled into it. And By name now. <laughs> yeah. So now we put a name to it and he's right. telling the world that, yeah, I was in your car and I left condoms on your baby seat. Mm -hmm. With Carmen. Yes. And. <laughs> Bringing Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson into Iverson. it. I think he was married at the he time was. too. He's like, hey, what, <laughs> what do I got to do with this? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw this part of the interview, but Carmen trying insert herself into it again mm -hmm. uh, she was just talking about how there's no way that this could have happened because she didn't even have a baby seat at the time it's like she, <laughs> my daughter was eight i didn't have a baby seat it's like he's obviously not talking about <laughs> him sleeping with you last week right he's talking about <laughs> Five, six, seven years ago. Yes, when this happened. He didn't say he just did it. He just said that he did it. Or it's just, you know, an embellishment. So right. it's like, you know, I'm sleeping with your baby moms. In theory, you got a car seat somewhere. Maybe <laughs> right. he didn't sprinkle condoms in the baby I'm seat, not saying but... that he even did it. <laughs> yeah. But for like, her to... I was around that time. Right. <laughs> but for her to try and justify it and say, right. no, my daughter's eight. <laughs> I don't even have a car seat. It's like, come on. He's obviously not talking about yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this one was extremely disrespectful. Very. <laughs> but, you know, there's still some lines, <laughs> some memorable lines. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of harsh stuff is happening in yep. the song, though. Yeah. So he's calling out names so much so that his mom. Yes. Had to forces get him to apologize. <laughs> Publicly. So he, Super Ugly was played on Hot 97, of course. And I guess mom was listening to the radio, heard Super Ugly and was like, nah, this is too much. <laughs> yeah. Like, apparently his mom heard it. Yeah. Nas's mom heard it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, basically everybody's like, you've gone too far. <laughs> I don't think so because... I think everything is on the table. All fair in love yeah, and war and when you beef it, everything is on the table. But I can understand why he apologized mm -hmm. because his mama told him to do it. <laughs> I get that. I'm thinking that because she made him apologize and he sounded like a, a bad little kid on oh, sorry <laughs> on the radio. That's what kind of swung it from yeah. being like a fifty fifty vote yeah. to swinging it sixty forty towards Nas. He a sucker. He had to apologize. Ha ha. Right. Nas won. So it became that kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that helped curry favor for Nas. But again, going back to just reading people's uh, reactions to it and comments and stuff, I think it just boils down to also what you find personally offensive. Yeah. <laughs> because but, like, for example, if you make fun of Jay-Z and by calling him ugly or gay, I don't right. think he cares because like it has never stopped him from getting women. Hello, he's married to Beyonce now. Exactly. <laughs> for how long? So I, I don't think, Saying that to him 
is going to make him feel bad. Right. And then he comes back and he's like, well, we can pop bottles on the boy's chipped tooth. So like, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you're going to call me ugly, but like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go get your tooth fixed. <laughs> yeah. So, and he actually has a chipped tooth. So <laughs> he had a chipped tooth. He had a chipped tooth. So I don't know. Maybe that's what caused him to finally <laughs> fix it. <laughs> so, so you cannot be ugly and people can still make fun of your looks. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't think Super Ugly was that great. Yeah. But it served its purpose. Yeah. Do I think he went too far? No. Nope. <laughs> like I said, anything is on the table when yeah. you're doing diss tracks. I think Super Ugly, too, when we were talking about beats, the fact that he did it over. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Dr. Dre and Nocturnal. And, but it started off. The, so the first half was, oh, was uh, got, got Yourself, yourself a, gun. a Gun, which. I mean, it's Nas's beat, yeah. and then the song is, ah, you got yourself a gun. Huh? Like, to me, it's just right. like, you know, Jay-Z loves his double entendres, so it's like he specifically picked that song, yeah. too. Yeah, so I think it kind of, like, there was some additional back and forth, but I think after Super Ugly, it kind of fizzled. No, because there it? were still two more songs after that. Oh. Like, of all the songs that the two of them did back and forth, Blueprint 2 is probably the best song of the group yeah i remember you know we've talked about this before and you mentioned that but i think for me like after super ugly it i guess it fizzled down for me in terms right. of like okay now i know they're beefing when takeover first came out i was like what yeah but by the time super ugly came out i was like eh they beefing right <laughs> yeah it didn't stop there because yeah. on the title track blueprint 2 jay-z's back at him again talking right. about my mama ain't gonna save yeah. you this time uh-huh <laughs> And, and one Nas, of my favorite lines that I say all the time around here, y'all buy the shit, get caught up in the hype because a nigga wear a koofy don't mean that he bright because <laughs> you don't understand him don't mean that he nice. It just means you don't understand the bullshit that he writes. <laughs> is it Uchi Wally or is it one mic? Is a black girl lost or shorty owe you for ice? Is this your king? <laughs> That's basically what Jay-Z said. Yeah. Is this your king? I do like that. Is it Uchi Wally or one more? <laughs> Which one is it, Nas? Mm -hmm. Because that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, man. You're going to give us some hits or you're going to give us the songs with Genuine. And I don't want the songs with Genuine. I think this beef kind of, for me, it kind of exposed Nas's inconsistencies. It was always there for me. But I, it, he mm -hmm. did come back with Last Real Nigga Alive, which mm -hmm. was better than Ether to me. Mm -hmm. Like if you had dropped something like that instead of Ether, I probably would have said you won. Right. But maybe he had more time to marinate on it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if I had to pick a winner, I would say Jay-Z. I think it's the pettiness, whereas he might have been hurt. I don't know. <laughs> whereas Nas seemed more like um, he probably needed a little more time to sit with it. And then he probably could have come up with something a little more consistent. And again, this is 20 years ago yeah. when replies to diss tracks were coming out six months later. Right. And we weren't getting them on Twitter the same right. night. So they had some back and forth, but eventually they just ended. <laughs> What's funny is mm -hmm. when they actually made up mm -hmm. on stage, mm -hmm. that was the I Declare War concert. And Jay-Z was on the radio talking about he was going to air out all these different people. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to it, None of that happened. Yeah. Like he wouldn't say who was getting aired out at this concert. Mm -hmm. It was just him putting his flag down. I declare war on these people. Right. And then we get there and he's bringing Nas out and they dapping it up and hugging on stage. And performing Dead Presidents. Right. Where Nas actually says the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what he was supposed to be yep. doing like 10 years before. So he brings Nas out and beef is over. They perform together. Even with all of the nasty attacks. Somehow they got over it. Yeah. And they have multiple songs with each other now. Yep. And Nas was signed to Def Jam when yep. I think it was. Oh, Jay-Z was president yeah. there. So at least in public it's over. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been, I wouldn't say disappointed in the songs that they've done together, but mm -hmm. I would have expected more from the two of them. Yeah. Maybe it's just too late. Yeah, the the moment it passed. Yeah. Like, they had two songs that have come out in the past six months. Mm -hmm. I haven't even heard the latest one yet. Yeah, that I've one's been on to and DJ just Khaled's haven't. album, mm -hmm. and then they got another one that was on DMX's album. Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I would say they probably have an EP's worth of songs together. Yeah. Eight or so, something like that. Some are better than others. Mm -hmm. BBC is by far the worst one. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) (laughs) I like it for just sort of being like, basically like the movies we were talking about in Queen Latifah's episode where like, I don't expect too much. I just want to be entertained. (laughs) So it's just like, it's like a fun song. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we are with the Nas and Jay-Z saga. They're buddy-buddy now. I don't know if maybe I'm just, I have hate in my heart. I don't know if I could get over someone saying all that (laughs) stuff about me. (laughs) Or maybe getting the money is more important. (laughs) Getting money is more important. Or just life goes on. Yeah, you're not 22 anymore. (laughs) Things have happened. You've grown up. People have changed. So Yeah. I, on the other hand, I'm with you. Like uh, (laughs) He said some harsh things. I don't know if we can... (laughs) Both of them said some harsh things. <laughs> like, I ain't going to hate you. Yeah. But we can't be friends. <laughs> That's just me. I don't know. But I guess at least it didn't end badly. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your favorite moment of this beef? Uh, Blueprint 2. Blueprint 2? Yeah. I would say TakeOver being performed at Summer Jam, but I wasn't there. So um, that don't count for me. <laughs> it's Blueprint <laughs> 2. Just with the, is it Uchi Wally or one mic? Yeah. <laughs> is this your king? That's <laughs> that was is this your king if it were a song? Yeah. I would say I don't know if I would call this a favorite moment, but I would say it's an iconic moment even though I love Mob Deep, but putting Prodigy up on the Summer Jam screen. Yeah. Because it's just it's unexpected like people just right. didn't do that shit before, right? Yeah. And didn't Drake do something like that? Yeah, he was just Recent. out of control with it. He was putting up tweets and yeah. <laughs> memes and but all it's sorts like, of would stuff. would he it, have done that if jay-z hadn't done it no <laughs> right? like it wouldn't be a thing yeah and even if people don't specifically be putting people up on screens like that is just a thing yeah like it's become an expression right That's become an expression and ether has become an yep. expression so yeah they both uh, contributed an iconic moment yes that was another argument i saw with some people talking about Nas won because they're like nobody says we're gonna take over and it's like because the word takeover is a little too generic yeah it's like that doesn't mean Nas is the winner because pe- nobody uses takeover like if, in that if that's what you're going with you really reach it for straws here <laughs> yeah so it's like you know what I don't disagree with the people who think that Nas won I just think Jay-Z was a little more concise yeah that's really the only reason why I yeah. say he won and for me it's sniper versus drive-by yeah and <laughs> Kanye is a much better producer than Ron Browse because yeah. I can't stand that beat for either. It's horrible. Yeah. You like, give it a different beat, it's probably something different for me, but I can't stand that. I think the only reason why that beat is even beloved is because of what it's associated with. Yeah. So, you know, when we see these memes and stuff and people will put the ether beat right. over something and it's like, ah, that that's makes funny. it funny. Yeah, because but, we know what that's from, but that's not something you just kind of like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you give that beat to, let's say MOP. Right. Is that song a hit? No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. But like I said, I think the people who, you know, were like, Oh, I appreciate lyricism won't have beef with that beat. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So we've gone through the history of the Jay-Z and Nas beef. We've each given our most favorite moments of both mm-hmm. our highlights of both. Is there anything else you would like to say, or you would like to add before we get out of here? I think that the reason why this was such a big deal is that's kind of, you know, the essence of hip hop is this competitive spirit. Right. And I think people just love to watch a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) it's true because (laughs) now that I'm thinking about it, Uh (laughs) Max Kellerman always says that as well. Like (laughs) people love fights. He says if if you're in an office and somebody comes in and says, hey, Jimmy and Terry are playing (laughs) basketball down the street. Or somebody says, Jimmy and Terry are fighting down the street. Which one are you getting excited about? So same situation. People love watching fights and free food. People love to see a fight. (laughs) Donuts in the kitchen. (laughs) Right. So, same situation. Yeah. So, again, it didn't seem very friendly at the time, but I guess it was just a war of words, I suppose, because everything seems to be all good now. And I say that it revived Nas's career. 
because he was spinning down the toilet at that point and ether brought him back yeah. from the dead or at least ignited that fire in him <laughs> yeah he needed it i pretend nostradamus doesn't exist <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. It has a couple good songs on it, but for the most part, no. Yeah. So that's all I have. All right. So stay tuned for part two, three, four, five, six, since we yeah, have we a have, whole bunch of go to go. We through. have a lot more to go through. <laughs> We're going to do Ja Rule and 50 Cent. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, Lil' Kim and Foxy, DJ Quick and MC8, LL Cool J versus Everybody. So we, we have a few. At some point. Yeah. <laughs> We'll spread them out. NWA versus Ice Cube versus <laughs> Ruthless versus Death Row. So we got more stuff coming. Yep. And on that note, now it's time to say goodbye to all <laughs> our listeners. <laughs> what song is this? M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, The Mickey Mouse Club. I didn't watch The Mickey Mouse Club. Me neither, but oh. I know it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get out of here and we'll be talking to you guys again in two weeks. Make sure to rate and follow us on your podcast service of choice, on your social media of choice at Troy Podcast. If you would like to hear some of the diss tracks between Nas and Jay Z and all these other folks, you can check out the title of this episode and search it on Spotify and the playlist will come up. Also, you can check out TroyPodcast.com. There's some cool stuff to check out on there and more to come soon at some point. Yes, I'm hoping by the time you hear this, that's something be we've been promising <laughs> for several episodes. It will be it there. It will be there. <laughs> so go check that out as well. And yeah, just come back and see us in two weeks. Until then, bye. Bye.